Hello friends. So in this lecture session, we shall go through Bluefish algorithm. So whatever is required to know about the algorithm has been drawn and written here on the whiteboard. So let us see what Bluefish algorithm is. So it was basically developed in the year 1993 by Bruce Snyder as an alternative to both DES and IDEA. Right? Now this algorithm is much faster and is compact and is pretty simple because it works on the fundamental principles of XOR and addition, modulo to addition and is secure. Now the reason why it is much secure is because of its variable key length. The key length can be varied from 32 bits to 448 bits. Right? So therefore it becomes difficult for an attacker to identify what could be the key length. Right? So since the key length is variable, right, it provides a better edge over DES and IDEA. And apart from that, if you have studied DES, you would have observed that the S box is fixed, isn't it? But here in Blowfish algorithm, what happens? The S box is dependent on the key, right? So therefore, since the key is kept secure, the security of the algorithm is dependent on the key. The S box is also dependent on the key. So therefore, this is a major difference when we talk about DES as well as Blowfish. Right? So now let's come back to the Bluefish algorithm. The Bluefish algorithm is a symmetric cipher having a plain text length of 64 bits. As I've already mentioned, the key length is variable, so it can be 32 to 448 bits. Now the Bluefish algorithm uses the Feastel cipher structure. So therefore, as we already know, the Feastel cipher structure has 16 rounds. So even here, there are 16 rounds of operation. Okay, now there are 18 sub keys, right? So P1 to P18, which are referred to as a P array, and each sub key is of length 32 bits. So that is something which we need to remember. So we'll come to the key generation later. So the number of sub keys is 18, P1 to P18. Now some textbooks also mention P0 to P17, so that can be written. The notation can be used as per your convenience. Right, so this is referred to as a P array and when we talk about the S boxes, right, as you already observed here, there are four S boxes, S box 0, 1, 2 and 3, right, each of length 32 bits, okay, and what about the input, each S box is of input 8 bits with an output of 32, right, so there is an expansion algorithm within the S box, so the input is 8 and the output is 32. So with these fundamentals or basics, let's move ahead with the Bluefish algorithm. Okay, so first, the plain text is of length 64 bits. So now, in order to encrypt the given plain text, what do we need? We need the key. So I have, I've already mentioned that the algorithm uses 18 subkeys, right? So now, in order to generate these 18 subkeys, which I refer to as the P array, what is done? Now, let us assume that we use 448 bits, okay, the maximum length of the key, right? Now this itself is divided into the sub key. So let us assume that 448 is divided by 32 because the, each sub key is of length 32 bits, isn't it? So if I divide 448 divided by 32, I get 14. So what am I doing? I have the key of length 448. This is the key length. I'm dividing it. So I get K1, I get K2, each is of length 32 bits. So if I divide 448 divided by 32, if I divide 448 and 32, I get 40. So I would get K1 to K40. So now before we obtain the P array, what is done? We actually initialize both the P array as well as S box. So the P array as well as the S box is initialized. So then what is done, if I consider 448 key length, I divide it into groups of keys, sub keys, intermediate sub keys K1 to K14. So I get 14 sub keys, isn't it? So to get P1, what is done, the initialized P array value is XOR with K1, so I get P1. Next, P2 is XOR with K2 and I get P2. The initialized P3 value is XOR. So and so on. So now P3 is XOR with K3 to get P3 and so on. 
So now we come up to P14, isn't it? So P14 is x over with K14 and we get P14. So now what do we do? We are only left with K14, isn't it? So again, it is repeated. So again, we XOR P15 with K1 to get P15 and so on and P18 XOR with K4 to get P18. So now we have the sub keys, 18 sub keys in the PRA P1 to P18. Okay, and they are actually used in the encryption algorithm. Right, so once we know how we get the keys, that is the sub keys P1 to P18, let us move ahead with the process of encryption. Now, in the process of encryption, as I've already mentioned, Blowfish algorithm uses Feastel cipher structure, isn't it? So since it uses Feastel cipher structure, the structure is very similar to what you have studied in DS. So now the 64-bit plain text is divided into left half and right half, right? So when I divide 64 bits into two halves, I get 32 bits. So here I have 32. And again, here I have 32 bits. The left 32 bits is XOR with the first subkey P1 here. So this is XOR with P1. So this also is 32. And then these 32 bits are given to the function f. Okay. So what happens in the function f? We shall see that later. So we come to the function f here later. Okay. So the output of function f again is 32 bits. And that is XOR with the right half, 32 bits. So finally, I get the output here. Now, these two outputs, 32 bits, are swapped. Okay, so this is one round of operation. They are swapped and the process repeats. So like this, we have 16 rounds of operation. So finally, the 16th round would be the left 32 bits, XOR with P16, and that is given to F16, and that is XOR with the right half, which comes and finally, I am here. So after 16 rounds, Okay, I get the left half and the right half. Now the left half is XOR with P18 and the right half is XOR with P17. And finally I get the final ciphertext 64 bits. Okay, so this is the encryption process of blue fish algorithm. So now the question is what happens in the S boxes, right? So the function F, the complex function F, is divided into S boxes. So here, the input to function F is 32 bits. So therefore, these 32 bits are internally divided into 8, 8, 8, 8, 4, 8 bits, right? So the first 8 bits will go to S box 0. The next 8 bits will move to S box 1. The next 8 bits will go to S box 2 and then to S box 3. So the input is 8, but the output is 32. So there's an expansion algorithm. We have already mentioned that this box, the output is 32, right? So there are 256 entries. So the input to this box is 8, and the output is 32. So here what is done, the output of the first S box, that is S box 0, is now added with the output of S box 1, right? So you have addition of modulo 2 power 32 and that output is XOR with the output of S box 2 and finally the output is again added with the output of S box 3 and we get the final 32 bit output. Now this 32 bit output is XOR with the right half and the algorithm. So like this we can proceed with the process of encryption using Blowfish algorithm. So what has to be remembered, that Blowfish algorithm was actually developed as an alternative to DES and IDEA algorithms, having a plain text of length 64 bits, key, variable length 32 to 448, round 60, number of sub keys is 18, P1 to P18, as P array, and S box, 32 bits, 256 entries, input is 8, output is 32, and there we have the S box, which is also key dependent, right? So that actually is a very important thing. So now we also have seen how we can generate the PRAs, P1 to P18, if we consider the number of bits to be 448, the key length to be 448. And then we have the entire Blowfish algorithm, which follows the Feastel cipher structure, divide the plain text into two halves, 
the left half is XOR with P1 and then given to function f. The function f of course has four S boxes, input is 8, output is 32 and then this is addition, XOR and addition, finally we get 32 bits and then that is XOR with the right half and there are 16 rounds and then finally you XOR the right half with P17, the left half of, with P18 and finally we get the cipher text. Okay, so this is Blowfish algorithm in its simplest terms. It's a pretty simple algorithm, right? So once you've already studied DS, it is very easy for us to follow the working operation of Blowfish algorithm. Okay, so I hope you have found the video informative. Make sure that you check all the other videos, lecture videos on cryptography. The playlist link has been given in the description. Make sure that you do like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.